Tonight, I veer closer to the edge of bankruptcy as I shoot the MP5 SDK. A mysterious bearded man stops by, and the dad from Modern Family insults me. It's all happening now on the 1911 Syndicate. Ah, hello everyone, and welcome to another edition of Reckless Spending with the 1911 Syndicate. Today, I come to you as a man who lives in great shame. You see, I already own two MP5s, the standard length and the K. And I can already hear your judgment and disappointment in me because there's an obvious gap in my trinity, the SD. But here's the thing, in a tight economy with a real estate market that has tanked, the last thing I need to be doing is spending unnecessary money, which means you'd have to give me a valid reason why I need an SD. James is disappointed that you don't have one yet. Because chicks dig it. 147s are pretty pricey nowadays, and this will convert 115s for free. You know, Jake, I thought of you like a son until I realized you don't even own an MP5 SD. Now, you're just dead to me. Okay, everyone, welcome to the show. It's great to be here today. Um, freaking beards all over the place. You know I know, what I'm saying? right? You know, for once, lengths. Yeah, yeah. and gray, yeah. and gray for that matter. Dude, not, to, not to throw <laughs> insults. I'm not trying to throw insults. <laughs> We're right literally away. 30 seconds into the video, and you straight <laughs> shit on the guest. No, dude. I like the gray. I like the I'm gray. I'm sorry. Oh, I don't mind. It's, it's very it's taken nice. me a lot of years and kids to get this gray. <laughs> yeah, so. you've earned it. You've earned it. Um, so we're talking MP5 SDs today. Um, I'm excited. Well, I guess I'll use this as a time to make an announcement. I'm finally becoming a man. I'm getting an MP5 SD. Um, this is very exciting news. I like to think my family's going to... the announcement was going very different. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that I'm becoming a man. No, I thought you were just coming out of the closet. Yeah, oh, like, yeah. yeah. Okay, was... yeah. Well, it's, you know, it's different. You know, we'll just see how the day shakes out. Who I knows? Guess. You know? I guess. <laughs> you know, but um, so Scott here is building my uh, personal gun. I'm going to be doing a MP5 SD K, which we'll get into talking about that uh, niftiness. But um, so we'll be looking at a few different things. Basically, hey, why the MP5 SD is sort of the best sub gun, if you will. Um, we've got a lot of shooting stuff from the range that we're gonna be bringing you guys regarding sound testing. And I like to think we're as scientific as we are capable of being today. Yeah. Um, and that's called these bad boys. <laughs> your ears. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. There's no quantifiable <laughs> metric <laughs> other than- And will vary from person to person to person. Correct, so. with varying degrees of hearing loss. Um, so who knows what we heard out there well, today. Chris um, has 2020 hearing, so we should be cool. It's true. Yeah, 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 excellent, right? So um, so Scott's here from Ronin Arms. Why don't you introduce yourself and kind of what you do for uh, folks uh, watching? Scott with uh, Ronin Arms. Uh, we're in Payson, Arizona. We do uh, integral suppressed weapons uh, as our, our main area of I guess expertise, uh, MP5 SD kind of being the, the main subject of it, uh, and variants kind of derived off of the technology of the MP5 SD, just modernized and kind of all the small little bugs that were initially in the design from HK back in the, the 60s when it was developed, we've kind of taken and gotten rid of the little bugs and issues that were a hindrance on the platform and then taking it kind of into the more modern age and 
expanding it over multiple platforms, but really kind of trying to keep it as traditional to the HK platform as we possibly can. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very cool. Well, so we've got a lot to talk about and we shall get into it. Okay, everyone, big thanks to the sponsor of today's video. I know I'm fiddling around at my waist. What's he doing? He's gonna take his pants off. Nope, he's gonna take his belt off. So this is my EDC belt. You can see it's from a company called Segera. This is the light inner Velcro belt. It's very flexible, as you can see here. I like that for EDC use because it keeps my hips mobile, right? If I needed to deliver a kick, take a kneeing position, whatever it is, um, Segera makes some great belts. They've got some more rigid belts. I hesitate to say stiff, but if you rigid belts, man never wants to look another man in the eye and say, stiff to another bro, you know what I mean? But if it's a more rigid belt, that's the emissary belt. Great for the range. I honestly rock this most of the time at the range, unless I'm doing more of a heavy, uh, you know, AK mags and things like that, in which case you could just use the battle wagon. They've got that. It's all on their site. We've done a couple videos. I'll link those below. Codes 1911 syndicate, no spaces, it's all lowercase. That'll save you 10%. Appreciate those dudes. On with the show. Okay, so first thing let's talk about is, we've talked about some of this on the phone, but the premise I post to you is why the MP5 SD is the king of the SD platform. I think the main reason for it being the king is the, the suppression part of it mm -hmm. and being because there's internal things that are happening that yeah kind of nudge it out the difference between a standard mp5 or an mp5k and an sd really is the whole front end of the gun itself so from the the barrel which is ported in order to reduce velocity of standard 115 grain 124 grain nato ammo so they were designed before subsonic ammo was even really a big thing. They were made to fight inside of a closet or enclosed room in the quietest manner possible, taking the ammo that was available and using porting and baffles and blast chambers inside the suppressor and the gun itself, slowing that ammo down to subsonic velocities before it leaves the suppressor, both keeping it quiet as well as retaining a lot of the ballistic values for knockdown power and everything else. So it's kind of merging the, the two different worlds of the sub machine gun and the suppressed weapon into one, one thing. end all be all king of the, the hill kind of thing. And, for, and from what you're telling me um, in other conversations, some, some of sort of the S, MP5 SD being the best of the SD platforms has to do with in terms of how much the round is able to be sped up before it starts hitting that porting and things like that, right? Exactly, yeah. So the MP5 SD platform is probably the best when it comes to the integral suppressed setup as far as barrel goes and the closeness of those ports to the actual chamber of your round. So the closer you get those ports to the chamber, the better you can knock down the velocity of that round consistently. Uh, there's always going to be variations in ammo depending on you know the quality of ammo that you're shooting and everything but it was mainly so that as soon as that round starts moving down that barrel it starts dumping energy through those ports out into your blast chamber so that it keeps it from reaching its full velocity that should be available to it thus making it quieter but also making it to where as it leaves the suppressor, it's subsonic. So you're not getting any supersonic crack. You're still retaining a lot of the same ballistics. You're scrubbing 250 to 300 feet per second off of that round within a five, you know, under six inch barrel. And that's on like 115s. Well, 115s, a... we've averaged on our MP5 SDs under Chrono, the ammo was on the box said 1,250 feet per second. We were at 980. Damn. Uh, pretty much consistently, mm. we had you know, slight variations in our extreme spreads on there, but most velocities were right around the 980 to 1,000 feet per second. Okay. So 1,050 is about your break point for supersonic. So we're staying below that, but not so far below that it becomes a disadvantage to that yeah, cartridge. Just zero ability to Exa stop yeah, anything. Yeah, where yeah. you're dumping so much energy that that round is ineffective at certain ranges. Sure, sure. Very cool. Okay, with that said, we will take you to a little bit of freaking science.
Okay, everyone, if you're looking for any ways to support the channel, that'd be great. Um, the 1911 Syndicate is a real estate company. We work all over the country. I say that, so hope to God you hear that. It's amazing the amount of people that buy houses in other states that know that we do real estate that don't call us. Shame on you. Support the channel. Give us a call if you need any help. We've also got our Patreon. You get some behind the scenes stuff. You get uh, special you know, merch and swag. We've got our like gold Zippos. They're not real gold, sorry. To, spoil that but they look like they're gold zippos um so anyway check that out appreciate it on with the show we're gonna conduct science today. <laughs> okay it will be loose um, term yes our version as best we can so uh kind of phase one here what we're gonna do is essentially mp5 head-to-head -head competitions so there's a couple there's full length mp5 right or standard length whatever you want to call it mp5k both those with cans on them um and we're gonna run Sub subsonic rounds through those compared to supersonic rounds through the SDs. And let's just kind of see, okay, can an SD running supersonic ammo actually be more quiet than a standard link suppressed running subsonic ammo? Okay. I like it. With a, a quick attached suppressor, not a SD suppressor. Correct. Yeah. Right. Right. Just to clarify for people. Guns. Basically yep. non-SD guns versus SD guns on varying grain weights. And we'll just see how that science shakes out. Cool. And all these are unloaded. We're all safe here, guys. We know we're in front of them, but relax. Okay. So experiment number one. So we're going to go MP5 SD with Scotty running 115s versus 147s from a standard MP5 with a B&T can. Yep. Yes. Okay. So... Can the SD be more quiet than actual subs running suppressed? Let's see how that sign shakes out. Yeah. Gotta go ahead, your first five. So, yeah, so just run like a cadence of five and let's see how we go here. That's not even close. <laughs> not even close. <laughs> not even close. And one in there popped off. Yeah, one you had that some gas stacking. Yep. Yeah. So that was dramatically more quiet. Yeah. And, and and disclaimer, it's always tough shooting suppressed on camera. Like we're gonna do our best to give you kind of the raw what our ears are hearing. But I mean, that wasn't even in the ballpark competitive. Nope significant difference holy after shit. after the first round of this i was like dude it's not even debatable wow uh, D run that one more time for confirmation's okay. sake five I'll, more i'll go ahead this time all right you go for yeah, it. yeah yeah yep i'm just gonna shoot into the berm <laughs> dang dude, okay it is a world of difference confirmed yeah. confirmed so that is significantly more quiet running 115s shitty 115s than some pretty Gucci actually 147s. I would say it's half the sound. I mean, it's big time difference. Yep. Holy Would you say 50% oh, yeah, reduction? 50% reduction at yeah. least. Science. Whoa. Yeah. Not okay. to mention the crack. You get a lot more supersonic crack out of that mm -hmm. almost every round where this yeah. is nothing. Non-existent. And those are subs. Yeah, and those they are shouldn't subs. be making a supersonic crack at all. Correct. That's why, okay, so now we'll go K versus K. Okay. Okay, up next is MP5K with, is that an Omega can? Mega 9K. Mega 9K um, versus MP5K SD or MP5SDK. Um, Chris is running uh, 147s. Yep. And then Scotty's running 115s. So same thing, right? Let's see who's more quiet on this. Go ahead. All right. So fascinating, less dramatic for me than on the full length. Oh, okay. So a that's tighter I... margin for sure. Yeah. Definitely yeah. more quiet. Yeah. But a, a tighter closer. margin. Yeah. What do you think the math on that is like 15.8% or 16.2? Somewhere around there. 17. Max 17. Max 17. 17. Yeah. I crunched it. Science. Yeah. Science. What numbers did you crunch for that? I, I just said my ears based on the environment and the altitude that we're at. Divided I, by two. Yeah, and I came up with 17. <laughs> okay. Um, so is there, um, you know, you're, you're, you're the guru on this. Is there any reason that the Ks would be tighter in sound difference than the full length? I have a theory. Is it, you just don't have as much time for sound to stay trapped with inside the weapon system on a K as a full length, which is why you're getting... Probably a little bit of that as well okay. as the the velocity of the round coming through a shorter barrel. You're not mating your velocities and burning your full powder in that short little K barrel. 
the suppressor might have something to do with it as well. You know, an aluminum suppressor versus a steel baffled suppressor. Mm. Okay. You might have some differences there as far as sound goes as, as, as well. Interesting. Well, Dang. in that case, why don't we swap the can on that and then run that same thing head to head with a different can and see how much maybe the can could be impacted. Or we that. can run a full size suppressor on that instead of a K suppressor. Let's grab a different uh, can. Yeah, cool. we'll be right back. So uh, next evolution here, same exact thing. All we did was swap the suppressor on the MP5K to the, um, at that Rad time, 9. OSS Rad 9 or Huxworks Rad 9. Otherwise, same experiment. We're just curious how much the suppressor made the difference on that K. Still very close, huh? It's pretty close and the tone was very different. Tone, tonally, those were very far apart. Yeah, the margin is definitely closer on the case. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. The full size was dramatic. Okay, next evolution of scientific experiments on the 1911 Syndicate. Um, so now we're gonna go MP5 SD versus a variety of calibers and platforms. And just, we're gonna inch our way down in caliber and speed, if you will, to see at what point we can get something as quiet as the SD. So we're gonna start with our baseline of loud, which is gonna be suppressed 223, actually 556 if we're gonna be specific. Suppressed 556, that's worth, that's with a uh, Huxworks Flow 556K, not the most quiet can in the world, um, against the MP5 SD. This should be pretty dramatic, so I'm gonna stand like uh, 20 yards off or something. Okay. I'll do five rounds. Yep. <laughs> it's almost That's comical. <laughs> It's pretty cool. <laughs> it's like big gorilla, and then like the little kid comes into the room, like, I'm here too. Like, it's just so quiet in comparison. I mean, that first round pop's pretty dramatic too. Um, pretty yeah. significant first round pop. Yeah. But you know, you know, not faulting on that. It's pretty normal. Yeah. But, I mean, that's your baseline. That's pretty dramatic. Um, and now we'll inch our way down to other nine mil sub guns. Okay, next we're gonna go. Uh, interesting one for me. So MP5 SD also still on 115s versus APC9 on 115s. Um, and that's with a dead air wolf, um, which is the precursor to the wolf man. So it's in the super short configuration, but it's 15s versus 15s here. So let's okay. scope that out. Man. It's still so dramatic, it's dude. It's not nowhere <laughs> close. I mean, it's not in the ballpark because you're hearing the crack on that. Oh, yeah, yeah supersonic you know. every time. Yeah, yeah, big you, time. You, you're hearing the crack every time. I mean, it's just quiet, tiny thud versus at this point still a crack. We'll get to subs versus subs, but we're gonna go uh, TP9 next. Okay, up next, uh, TP9 running 115s with the BNT can, which is a pretty high volume can. Yeah. Um, Against MP5 SD, also on 115. All right. Okay. So for me, it's a closer margin than the APC. Like that definitely for me is more quiet than the APC. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, still nowhere close to sound suppression. On, still had a on supersonic MP5. crack in yeah. there. Yeah. Um, that said, that TP9 does sound good. Yeah. It is a good sounding gun. Oh, yeah. Still nowhere close though. Okay, mm -hmm. up next, we're gonna go Mark 23. Um, you're damn right, first of all, you're welcome. <laughs> um, running uh, 230 grains, uh, which for those that don't know, for, that's subs, period. Um, so that's subsonic, 45 at like twice the grain weight uh, with the B&T can, same baseline for the, for the, uh, for the MP5. Okay. Right, let's hear this. Five rounds? Very curious on this.
it's a pretty wide gap. I mean, from over here, you can not tell. being behind the gun, it's a pretty wide gap. Because for me, I was like, man, those sound real similar behind the gun. Yeah. Yeah. But you're saying there's a pretty big margin. It's pretty big gap. Pretty big gap. Yeah. I, I mean, like that pistol sounds phenomenal, especially again for a pistol. Yeah. Um, but it's still a pretty big margin at this point. Okay, so let's talk a little on the actual conversion process and I'll like highlight. taking a standard MP5, yeah, MP5K so, and making it an ST. Yeah, so we did a, a, a video on the MR556 not that long ago and converting it to a 416. Yeah, yeah, you know, there was a lot of people that I don't really think they understood that, you know, they see the MR556 and they go, oh, it's this, you know, match 16 inch gun, you know, what do I need that for? It's like, I don't, I don't know that you guys are getting that you can take, use that as a base and make something really freaking cool out of it. In the same way that they might not know, hey, you can just take an SP5 and, you know, there's there's SP5s that, you know, it's like, that's my SP5, there's other ones out here, but it's like, hey, you can take that and get an SD out of it. Oh yeah. Right, obviously there's a conversion process, which is what you shall tell us goes into that. Yeah, uh, basics with that, we like to use quality clones for any kind of conversion. So the SP5s are a great host for a conversion. Some of the other clones on the market you might not have as good of results just because of certain things being in and out of spec uh, from the factory. But the SP5s, uh, basically we cut the whole front end off of the gun, uh, push the barrel out of the trunnion uh, for the standard barrel. We cut your cocking tube off because it's a completely, oh, no different, completely different cocking tube for the SDs. Well, no way. So know. cocking tube will be removed, whole front end. We'll push back in for yours, the, the K barrel. So we have special MP5 SDK barrels made specifically for that. So they're an inch shorter than a standard barrel. So everything is off of a standard spec, but just shrunk down. Well, gotcha. may maybe start with it. Just grab the standard one there. Yeah. So yeah. maybe, um, and we'll pick it apart a little bit, but let's, let's start with it. Cause it's one of the first sort of things that I was wondering is, so MP5 SD, right? MP5 SDK. Yes. Um, which is also not to be confused with an MP5K exactly. SD. It's yeah. like, no, 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 no. It's not the basis of an MP5K. It's so, but so aside from the obvious, the suppressor length, there are actual internal differences that are happening here. Yes. Mainly inside of the suppressor itself. Okay. So the difference that we found when we were designing and kind of engineering the, the K model, the standard has been the the best thing out since the 60s early 70s when they were first fielded but the k model was kind of an idea we had of doing a smaller more compact version but still keeping everything 115 grain 124 grain subsonic before it leaves mm -hmm. the issue with doing that is there's not enough baffles in an eight inch suppressor if you keep your barrel at a standard length. So we found that by reducing the length of our barrel and the blast chamber inside the suppressor itself by an inch, moving the barrel support back an inch and basically making that just a smaller expansion chamber, we were able to fit a few more baffles into the stack in order to keep those levels down below supersonic. Okay. So there's wow. a lot of other companies that are doing a K version, B and T, there's other companies that are making them, but none of them are doing the shorter barrel, shorter expansion chamber, and more baffles. So they end up still cracking supersonic with 115s and 124, mm. four, excuse me, which ours will not. Yeah. So which I mean, if you're difference. cracking supersonic, like, what's the point? Yeah. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> yeah. Like, literally, you defeated the whole point. And yeah. I mean, maybe one thing just so that, you know, people understand, like, a proper SD, that's the point of an SD. Yes. Right, an actual SD, not what some people will just label throw an SD term on, but it's like an actual SD takes supers, converts it into subs. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So a lot of people in the industry, especially, have kind of taken the SD and run it across the gamut of every single platform that they can think of. So yeah. if you have a can that's tucked underneath your handguard, right, companies will call that an SD because it's a tucked can suppressed. under the handguard. Yeah. It's suppressed, but the SD. In German, SD stands. I don't. I can't pronounce it, but it basically means suppressed. So they're still meaning that. Give it a that, shot. Give it a shot. But with the it's German not words. a true. No, I have no idea. I can't even try. <laughs> You're it. German. You yeah, you should it. know. Oh, yeah, it no. should be ingrained in your DNA. <laughs> right. that, that should be something you learn. We came over born. before the war, so I'm yeah. better at English. Okay. But yeah, the uh, the the main differences between these two are the suppressor length 
and the barrel length. Porting and everything is exactly the same. Okay. So we have the exact okay. same porting on both of these platforms. That way everything in that part of it is is not a variable. Mm. So the more var variables we could cut out of what could cause other issues with suppression, we tried to simplify it as much as possible to make it just work. Very so cool. doing the shorter suppressor with the shorter barrel ended up being the best option for keeping the suppression down, but keeping reliability up. And in terms of, okay, so someone watching this, you know, I, I'm, give people almost like a step-by-step -step guide, if you will. So if you go in much in the same way that we did this, you know, because there's barrel chops, there's gas boxes that get swapped, all that kind of shit. So if you, if you see this and you go, hey, yes, I want that. What do I need? It's what? You need a base gun yeah. to begin with. Base gun like this, yep. just regular SP5. So we'd push out your original barrel, take off your front sight, chop your uh, original uh, cocking tube off. So basically... The receiver is all we need and use of the original donor gun. Which is almost such a sad it is. thing. It's that, like That's the know. sad part about it is that a lot of people, especially with the AR stuff, they're yeah. so used to being able to plug and play in yeah. adult yeah, yeah, Legos. Yeah. You, you yeah. build your Lego gun however you want and put it all together. These are a completely different thing. Everything's welded, everything's you know, press fit and head spaced. So you have to you don't have as many options. So mm -hmm. you really have to be more I guess, detail oriented when you're building one of these because one little thing being out of whack, if your barrel shroud is off by a degree or two in any direction, you're getting rub on your 12 inch suppressor going down inside of there yeah. that also has to fit over your barrel and retain on a barrel support. So you have two points of contact to your suppressor and your barrel the back where it's threaded and the barrel support, which is about four inches down the, the standard suppressor that actually is a, a barrel support in the suppressor that attaches or sits on the end of the barrel. So there's no way to get any kind of- Play in there. Flop in there. Yeah. You're not gonna ever have a baffle no strike one with an SD can. Yeah, no, none of that kind of stuff. So it makes it a very user-friendly and kind of brainless system as far as maintenance wise yeah wash it keep it clean oiled everything like that and you won't run into any issues there's a lot of people that have the misconception that the sd platforms are extremely dirty and require a ton of maintenance and you have to clean them every 500 rounds or something and the way we redid our porting and our barrels as opposed to the original mp5 sds is we changed the size and the distribution of the ports to be self-cleaning so you don't ever have to worry about any of those ports getting clogged up with carbon or that carbon building up inside your blast chamber to the point where it's a solid block of carbon around your ports and yeah. you're getting no benefit of right. those ports. <laughs> right. So by having our flow through barrel support in our suppressor as well, all of that carbon goes forward into your baffle stack. So we have cans with 50,000 plus rounds through them um, that still shoot like they're brand new. That's crazy. <laughs> And That's the barrels awesome. look brand new too. We do all cold hammer forged barrels, just like HK. All of them are black nitride coated, unlike HK. So we have 50 to 100,000 round barrel life through our nine mil barrels. That's badass. So, yeah. Damn. You know, you're you're fan. making an investment into a conversion that's going to be something you can keep the rest of your life and hand down to your kids, hopefully. Yeah, and shocker, hey, look, um, you know, they ain't exactly giving them away. Like, it's not no. a, it's not the cheapest gun They're in not the cheap. world, to. No. But but at the same time, hey, if you're getting into this, you know what you're getting into. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, you know, you, you know what you're playing with. Well, so, and, yeah. and from what Scotty just said, right? Like, you're getting, you're going to get something that's a little hard to get, a little pricey. You're then going to dump some more money into it. Mm -hmm. Just like any platform that you buy, you're going to find your things that you want to accessorize it with. Yeah. And that's another thing we're trying to work on with the MP5 platforms is make them more modernized. You know, M-Lock front shroud is a design that we're currently working on having made so that instead of it being either the tri-rail or the standard, mm -hmm. you know, SD handguard, you can run any M-Lock attachments you want at any of the angles and be able to kind of modernize your SD cool. to more of a AR style ergonomic platform. Yeah. yeah. Very, very cool. Yeah. What I was going to say though, is like, even though these are a little hard to get, a little pricey, you're going to dump some more money into it. You've built it in a way that like, you're going to get every penny worth of those modifications. Oh yeah. Cause that yeah. means something to you. Yes. Right. I, I like, don't build with parts kits. I yeah. don't build with used parts. Everything is brand new. Everything is, is built specifically for use. So right. I want you to be able to beat it up as hard as you possibly want to 
and if it breaks, then we fix it. Yeah. So, and you uh, want to know how it breaks so exactly, you can improve yeah. it, right? I, I try to get our weapons into as many different hands as possible with as many different people that really run guns hard because I want to know the failure points and where I can make changes. I am lucky enough being a small business and kind of catering to a very niche market that I can take and, you know, take insight from people that have a lot more knowledge and time behind some of these weapons than I ever will and then employ that into how I design, how I build and how I kind of engineer some of the little things that make these weapons that much more functional. Yeah. Very cool. Love it. All right. With that said, we will take you back to some more science. For me personally, this is the most interesting one because um, we got one more, which seems like a foregone conclusion. But to me, this one's interesting. So uh, 220 grain SIG subsonic 300 blackout. That's on a Griffin Mark II with their... I know it's a 7. I don't remember if it's a HRT7. I want to say HRT7 can. Um, HRT7. HRT7 can, which is a very... This, of guns that I own, that Griffin I would probably rank as the most quiet gun that I own. Okay. Okay. Um, so that versus the SD. To me, this is fascinating. Okay, here we go. Right. That's still more quiet. Yeah, it's still more quiet. Now, the, you're, you're starting to approach a, a pretty close margin, um, but it is still more quiet. That sounds, I mean, again, for a rifle, oh, yeah. um, sounds phenomenal. And of course, at this point, now you're starting to play the game of like, okay, but, you know, ballistics and, you know, like sub gun on steroids arguments. Like, I, I get it. There's a valid argument for both of these. MP5 SD, still the reigning champ of the day, though. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, and for what I would assume is gonna be the challenge where the MP5 SD finally gets smoked. Okay, for the final challenge, um, MP5 SD versus, this is also your gun, tell us yeah. what that is. So this is a Descent 22. So it's a Ruger Mark IV with our integral suppressor uh, system on it. So it's uh, taking supers and turning them into subs, same as the MP5 SD, it just does it with 22 and stupid quiet. Like movie Super, quiet. Supersonic 22 Super is Sonic always 22. subsonic in a pistol, though. No. Supersonic 22 is usually over 1,200 feet per second. Okay. So even in a short pistol configuration, you're still reaching your velocity because it's such a light projectile. Oh, so I thought barrel length messed with that. Barrel length will in the really short ones. If you have a two-inch barrel, you gotcha. might not meet velocity. But most 22s, four-inch barrel length is about the standard and okay. you're going to reach your close to your maximum velocities within that four inch <laughs> gotcha. with a 40 grain bullet cool so. the more you know okay good so i i will just say i'm going to assume the 22 cannot be touched um yeah. that that should be the reigning champion let's have scotty shoot first this yeah time. scotty will shoot first cool. <laughs> it's still so ridiculously quiet dude Okay, winner. Yeah. <laughs> okay, winner. <laughs> and those are supers. Yeah, I mean that's a, that's at the point of just comical. Like, okay, yeah, we're we're getting. I'm gonna shoot the rest of this yeah. like a movie. Hmm. Yeah. Well, first of all, I'm probably gonna need one of those. Um, <laughs> so cool. Yeah. I, yeah. Um, okay. So finally, the uh, MP5 SD goes down by a 22. Not really in a fair fight, though. <laughs> Not really a fair fight. That for home defense, not so hot. That for home defense, pretty damn Perfect. badass. Yeah. So, all right, on with the video. Okay, everyone, welcome back. And uh, talking just, you know, there's a lot of people that would argue that the MP5's, you know, out of date, no relevant, and yada, yada, yada. And, and, and hey, I, I've been in that boat, which super fast sidebar. Literally, <laughs> that's how originally we got... Linked up with you. How, yeah, linked up. <laughs> Several years ago. Was a shit-talking storm on the internet of an mp5 fan versus mp5 haters and look at this look at us yeah. now we're all friends, friends yeah. right? look at this. 
<laughs> the internet is We've just been a weird, wonderful place. We've been with HK a couple times, yeah. now with you. I mean, it's a funny full circle thing, which also should tell you it's fine to change your mind on things, everyone. Very much so. Embrace yeah. change. Um, but anyway, sort of final thoughts like relevance of the MP5 SD today. Um, where do you see it fitting in and still having a place? Uh, I see its main purpose in uh, home defense, honestly, is the, the main reason for it. And the main reason why I, I've told many people that that's my thoughts on it is because of the almost force multiplying aspect of it is, you know, if you have to engage somebody inside of your house, you want to have the advantage over them. If you were to set off a, you know, a round of a non, non suppressed weapon or even a suppressed weapon inside of your house, you're going to get some ringing in your ears, which means you can't hear movement through the rest of your house. If there's multiple people, you are at a disadvantage at that point, especially if there's low light where this, I think the biggest advantage of it is it's going to be quiet. You're not going to ring your ears and you can take out a bad guy and then assess if there's any other threats or bad guys in the area, just being able to have that extra sense about you yeah. in that environment at that time with adrenaline and everything mm -hmm. else running. So yeah. I, I see that as the main usefulness for this platform right now. I mean, there's tons of military and law enforcement applications that are way more in the weeds than than just the civilian part of it but on the civilian side i definitely think that this is probably the best platform for home defense i'd, I'd argue two more i would argue 100 percent that one on a practical level oh yeah two, two more kind of niche ones i would say a great way to introduce a new shooter into shooting some sort of carbine system that's Definitely. not intimidating because yes. I'm not, oh my God, it's so loud. It's like, that's a very approachable way to teach someone yeah. three points of contact and how to manipulate a, a longer gun. Yeah. My seven-year-old daughter has shot my MP5 SDs. Yeah, it's yeah. very approachable. And I would say the third one and potentially even the, the coolest one is I don't know that you'll have more fun shooting the gun <laughs> than you will taking an MP5 SD to the yeah. range and being like, well, this is just as fun as it gets. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, and at the end of the day, it's like shooting is supposed to be fun and a joyous thing. It's like, that's largely why we all got into it. It's like, I don't think you'll have more fun than that. Nope. Not to mention the cool factor of going to a range and pulling out a, a gun that 95% of people on that range have probably never seen in person. Yep. Probably sure. 99. Yeah, if not more. Let's yeah. be realistic. Oh, yeah. you know. You'll see you know, ARs and, yep. and everything everywhere else, but then you pull that out and now you're the outlier in the entire range. Sure. And mm -hmm. you're the quietest guy there. No doubt. No doubt about that. So, um, yeah, with that said, we will have a video coming up on a uh, MPX SD. So uh, you guys will see Scott back on the channel um, from another video that we're doing today. So you guys have that to look forward to. But we'll take you to one last thought. Jake, you know, while we're out here shooting, if you ever had to defend yourself, you'd want something. And yep. what that something is, is self-defense insurance. It's very true. Specifically, firearms legal protection. Mm. They are a concealed carry slash self-defense, if you will, insurance. Yep. Whether it's firearms, a rock, a knife, any legally justified self-defense scenario, they will cover you. Yep, uh, unlimited. They got the attorney hotline. Um, they don't call it body cleanup service, but that's kind of sort of what it is also. Because um, hey, someone got to clean that up. Yep. Um, you know, dark, yeah. dark, true. Little dark, but it's true. Dark, they got but three true. separate packages you can choose from. Single bachelor package. That's not what it's called, but that's what we call it here. Yeah. The married traveler package, and then there's some in between. And our code nineteen eleven will save you about a third off each package. Cool. Thanks, so. guys. See you next week.